Hi and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is my podcast about knitting and crocheting. My name is Carmen and I am a crochet and knitwear designer, hoping to be a full-time designer one day. And you are very welcome to join me on my journey. You can follow me on Instagram as New Leaf Designs NL. I also have a website, newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list all of the other things right here. So thank you for joining me today. I have seen that the channel has reached 4,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you all so much. It seems to be kind of snowballing a bit because uh, it's not such a long time since we had 3,000 subscribers. So thank you all so, so much. Prepare for a lot of knitting and other content today because I've actually had one week extra between last episode and this episode and that's because last Thursday when I was actually about to record we um, I went to a center parks with my family and my boyfriend and uh, we had the best time and it was the weather was amazing so yeah I just chose to um, record the podcast one week later before I start showing you my projects I just want to mention that we have a knit along going on at the moment which is the stripe and stranded knit along stripe and stranded is a sock pattern of mine uh, that uses stranded color work and uh, we have a knit along for that. Originally I was going to end it at um, the end of April but I've decided to extend it to May 9th so uh, just to give you a little bit more time uh, you can check the Ravelry group um, for more information on that and also um, where you can uh, post pictures of your finished objects with which will count as your entry to the knit along and to win a prize um, Yeah, so I will be uh, Closing the finished objects tre thread on May 9th end of day and then on May 10th I will record the next episode and draw for the winner or winners. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, so that was just a little announcement. And now on to my finished object. Uh, I finished one pair of socks since I last uh, saw you. And they have been worn already. So apologies if they look a little bit scruffy. <laughs> but here are the scrappy socks I knit for my boyfriend. And I love them, he loves them, he loves wearing them, and um, yeah, uh, they they kind of took a long while, well, longer than socks usually take me, um, but that was because socks are usually my project that I take with me on the go, but mm, scrappy socks aren't really, uh, you know, portable because there is a lot of yarns uh, that I use for each sock. Let's see, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen different. Uh, well, no, I repeat a couple of them. Oh well. Um, so let's say about twelve uh yarns about 12 different yarns for these socks and um yeah so that doesn't make them quite as portable as i would like so i could only work on these while at home but um yeah i'm so glad to have finished them uh this is only the second pair i have knit for my boyfriend and he definitely deserves more because he's a very knit worthy person um he always appreciates my knits and um yeah, <laughs> the last pair has been thrown into the washing machine, I think even in the dryer machine because they're super felted, but um, yeah, I've forgiven him for that because he still wears them. Uh, he says uh, the, the felted layer just provides extra warmth, so bless him. Um, yes, so these are my finished object for this episode. Um, 
I actually haven't made a scrappy pair for myself yet, so I'm saving up some yarns to make a scrappy pair for myself one time, one day. Now, on to my work in progress that I am most excited about talking to you today. Uh, it is my Melly cardigan. And as you can see, I've knitted the sleeves. Ta-da! And I've attached them to the body. Here is sleeve number two. <laughs> and I am trying out for the button band. Here are my little button band swatches. Um, yeah, let me tell you a bit more about um, my progress so far. So last time, I think I was done with the body, but, uh, and I was, I started a sleeve. And uh, I don't know if you remember what the sleeve looked like, but um, you start at the cuff and it's just like this wide and then it rapidly goes, um, like you rapidly increase at the sides um, and the top stays flat. And so here's the side seam. And I looked up this video on how to do mattress stitch on pearl on the pearl side. Let me see if I can find that video. Right, um, the instruction video on how to do the mattress stitch on the pearl side, I looked up a video by Sheep and Stitch. And it was, yeah, it's an amazing video. Um, just afterwards, I was able to do it without any uh, problems and it just seemed logical to me all of a sudden. So. Uh, so that was very easy to do. Um, and then the seaming of the sleeve to the body. Uh, I know there's a video on how to do a mattress stitch for, uh, because th this is pearl side and this is also pearl side, but uh, the direction is different, right? So there's a video on that, on how to do the mattress stitch. And I think that's actually a tutorial by Andrea Maori. But uh, since I didn't know if the stitch count would match for both pieces, then the mattress stitch doesn't really work because the mattress stitch kind of interlocks your knitting. So you have to have the same amount of stitches. And I wasn't sure if, um, if these two pieces would have the same amount of stitches because they were the sleeve was a little bit wider than the uh, armhole so I was a little bit worried that it was going to bulge and it does bulge a little bit here in the underarm but um, on the pictures on the schematic it also kind of you know uh, it looked like it was supposed to look in the schematic but yeah, so I just um, turned the work inside out. Um, so I put the right sides together and I turned it inside out and then I pinned it into place and then I just seamed the two pieces together. Like you enter from one side to the other and then just go back so you have small stitches on either side. So uh, I'm not sure what this stitch is called. I do know the whip stitch that goes from one side over to the other and then, so you only enter on this side and then you have kind of uh, strands um, over the top of the seam. So that's the whip stitch, but this, you enter on one side, uh, go out on the other, and then enter from the other side. So, so you kind of have little horizontal bars um, on each side, and that's what I used to seam it. And I think it worked out pretty well. 
although yeah it doesn't it's not completely flat there's this kind of ridge here but um, I'm not too worried I think it still looks looks nice um, so now I've moved on to the button band and I am very <laughs> worried that this is not going to look right so I wanted to ask for your uh, advice on this uh, so let me first show you the side where I haven't done anything yet so so as you can see it kind of curls outwards you see that the pearl side kind of curls onto itself um, and when I am um, trying out for the button band, the button band kind of flaps or flips outside along with the, um, the edge. So I'm kind of worried that when I do the entire button band that it will just kind of flap open. And I'm not sure how to fix it. Um, I'm using smaller needles for the ripping for the button band. I am picking up stitches right at the edge um, and with one a little swatch I just did one by one ribbing and with the other one I first did a um, um, so I pick up stitches on this side then I turn it and then I did just one knit row so there would be pearls on the right side and sometimes just having a pearl row in there kind of uh, stops it from flipping around or flip, flipping to one side but it doesn't seem to work so I'm kind of debating if if I should just do um, the option with the pearl row all around and just hoping for the best that it will work um yeah maybe it will stay flat with some steam blocking i don't know i i tried to look up um instructions on this online but the only thing i can find is to stop a hem from flipping so uh, that would mean the uh, bottom side of the garment and I have also added a little uh, pearl row here and this is all fine um, I just don't know what to do with the button band uh yeah so if anyone has any tips on that please let me know otherwise i'll just go ahead and see if it works out and if not frog it it's no big deal but yeah of course it is nicer to have it right at the first try so yeah let me know if you have any advice on that but other than that i am loving this i will quickly try to put it on for you so yeah, it's it's a little bit baggy, but that's what it's supposed to be like. The sleeves are like uh, three sleeves. I really like those and I don't even mind the little bulge here. Um, I like the shoulder seam. The, this was a three needle bind off. And yeah, I just love the texture, the colors. And I just hope the uh, button band is going to work out. Yeah, because I do need like two inches of button band all around kind of to stop it from slipping off the shoulders. It's a nice length too, but yeah, I will hopefully show you soon when it's finished. Um, so the only thing I'm kind of sad about is that, uh, uh, I wasn't able to finish it before the end of the pom-pom quarterly spring knit along, but I do believe 
that when the spring knit along ends, so that was in April 22nd, I believe they automatically start a summer knit along, so I might be able to enter it for that. Um, because you can always win some yarn with that, and of course, one can never have enough yarn. <laughs> Yeah, so let me know if you have any tips on that and I will um, probably share more of my trial and error next time. And if you are wondering, yes, I did also knit this cardigan. This is the Miete cardigan, or at least that's what I think it's called, by Andy Satterlund. Um, it's a free pattern of hers and it was the first cardigan I knit, I think has a lace detail around um, around the sleeves, around the front, around the back, and it's it's amazing. It's a great pattern, uh, knits up super fast. I knit this in drops cotton light, um, originally in an ice blue colorway, but then uh, ice blue Turned out that it didn't really suit me, so I uh, I over dyed it with some Dylon um, textile uh, dye. So yeah, now it's kind of this denim blue. I really like it. Uh, the next work in progress that I want to show you are my striped and stranded socks. Um, I've only knitted a little bit on this. I've added two more stripes since the last time and I'm not sure if I already put the heel in then but anyway there's a heel <laughs> um, I am using West Yorkshire spinners uh, yarn a signature four ply in the passion fruit cooler colorway which is a self striping yarn uh, totally amazing um, and available for purchase at Alternate Universe in the UK and also at Black Sheep Wools, Wool Warehouse, just a lot of places, both online and offline. And the contrast color that I'm using is some yarn I bought in China years ago. So yeah, it's 50% acrylic, 50% wool. Yeah, so I just uh, used that for the contrast color and the uh, color or the yarn I'm using for the heel and toe and probably also the cuff is uh, also West Yorkshire Spinners in the Penny Royal colorway, kind of a lavender uh, blue, uh, lavender purple shade. So I've added two more stripes and I am loving the progress on this, even though I haven't been so, um, uh, I haven't been working a lot on it because uh, I think it's something with, you know, stranded color work and the amazing weather that we've had, I've just not felt the urge to uh, work on it, which I think is normal. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, so I've extended the deadline until May 9th, so that's still a couple of weeks. So I will hopefully be able to finish my pair. And they are, there are already so many beautiful pairs um, in the Ravelry group, and I just love seeing all of them. Also on Instagram, they are all so beautiful, and uh, thank you all for sharing them. Um, if you do, if you if you haven't shared your uh, picture yet of your striped and stranded socks, you can do so with the hashtag striped and stranded cow or striped and stranded socks or both, preferably actually. Um, Yes, so, and also a shout out to Erin from the She Must Knit podcast, who is knitting a beautiful pair of striped and stranded socks. She's using a uh, aqua uh, gray and 
so an aqua gray striping and then with a red uh, contrast color and it's amazing i just love aqua and uh, vibrant red and yes it's gonna be an amazing pair of stripe and stranded socks so yay <laughs> on to my next work in progress which is also a pair of socks um and this is a very special pair because i had never knit with this type of yarn before and uh, it's not the content that's so um different because it is a it's a merino nylon blend but it came from a sock blank so let me show you what the rest of the sock blank looks like so it's uh, this was an Alice in Wonderland sock blank. You can see Alice right here, and here's the Mad Hatter. Oh, there's some stray yarn on this. Yeah, and I believe I showed the entire sock blank. Um, I must have received it in December or January from Het Wool Based, which is a Dutch indie dyer. And she did a Alice in Wonderland mystery club or a mystery mystery pack. It was just one, uh, one time. Um, and so there was this sock blank and several charms and also a needle cozy with Alice in Wonderland um, inspired fabric. Um, so I knitted, uh, uh, one sock is already completed, and that's this one. Um, and as you might notice, I've actually turned it inside out because I like the uh, pearl side better of this sock. But let me show you with a stock net or with the knit side out. It's not much of a difference. Um, yeah, so lots of uh there's kind of a beige uh base and then there are lots of green speckles or stripes actually yellow pink blue black um and some brown at the top this was part of a bunny <laughs> i feel i feel like i've kind of dismembered the the bunny from the sock blank, so it's kind of kind of weird. Um, also, I was knitting this when I was on holiday with my family, and they could just not understand that I would rip out this piece of art and then make these socks from it because um, the sock blank is way more pretty than these socks, but I still like them, and it was it's not for. For this project, it's not the finished object that's, um, you know, I'm knitting it because it's such a surprise to knit with a sock blank. Um, this is more of a process knit for me, so, but I still like the socks very much and I knit them with a longer leg and a longer cuff because usually I only use about 60 grams for a pair of socks for me. And of course the sock blank is 100 grams and the most interesting part of this sock blank is this part right here the end so so i knit the leg and the cuff as long as possible and then in the middle of sock blank there was this part with uh with the cheshire cat smile but it was all white and black and then um and then the text were all a bit mad here uh, but it was all black and beige and blue and green so i thought okay i'm just gonna um wind that into a little ball i have it here so i wound the middle part of the uh, sock blank into a a ball and then i just decided to um yeah i how am I explaining this? I I wound out the middle part of the sock blank. So hopefully with a second sock, I can use use up all of this. So let me show you where I am with the second sock. 
So I've just completed the heel. I will tell you about that progress keeper later. Um, so there is a lot of fun yellow here and also some orange, I believe. No, there is some uh, pink and then some orange speckles there. So now I'm about to start on Alice. <laughs> so I expect the first part of the leg to be really blue and yellow. And hopefully with the cuff I will get, mm, I think I will get to halfway across the Mad Hatter. So yeah, we'll see, but they're a lot of fun. And um, the sock blank unravels really easily. Um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to knit with this. And actually, it's nice to not have a ball of yarn in your uh, bag. I've been, I'm, because I've been taking this um, with me as travel knitting. Because usually a ball gets kind of tangled in my bag or, you know, kind of sloppy. And with the sock blank, it's... Not a problem. This is perfect travel knitting. Also because you can kind of squeeze it into, um, you know, you can, it will fit into flatter bags because it's not a ball. Don't know if it's making sense, but anyway, perfect travel knitting, really entertaining. And, um, yeah, so, uh, because, because uh, the yarn isn't straight to begin with. Um, the fabric uh, you get is kind of bumpy. So because of that, and I don't know if blocking will fix this, I thought I will use the reverse stockinette side as the right side. So uh, hopefully it, will, it won't bother me as much because the pearl side is supposed to be bumpy so so I think I think that will be very nice oh right and I used a garter heel this time so I did that the same way as my German short row heel this still is a German short row heel but I'm not purling anything so so I'm just doing knit rows and so it's a stretchier heel because garter stitch is kind of stretchy and um, yeah, provides a little bit more interest. And I like to think that it might be sturdier too because garter is thicker than regular stockinette. Yes, yeah, so tell uh, so let me tell you about this stitch marker. <laughs> Let me show you up close because it is hilarious. Do you see it? It's like a goldfish in a bag. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So wait, I'm going to take it off and show you properly. See, it's, it's a little goldfish in a bag. And the, uh, so the bag is plastic and it's filled with, I think, epoxy or something. It's, uh, it's, it's firm. And the goldfish is just this plastic or foam, I don't know, just the shape of a fish and uh, attached to a lobster clasp. And it's just, it's just hilarious. And I got this off Etsy uh, from uh, from a shop, Gretel Creates. I'll try to find the tag. So yeah, it was uh, on this, on uh, this little tag, Gretel Creates. And she has loads of stuff, but uh, her shop is actually uh, aimed at, um, like she has planner accessories. So if you're into uh, bullet journaling, bullet journaling, um, she has, uh, well, I also bought, I also bought these sticky notes. Oh my God, so cute. 
yeah so she has a lot of like small stationery but um also planner charms which i don't i don't understand why you would need planner charms but you know i'm not I'm not into bullet journaling, but I thought this would make amazing progress keepers. So, yes. Oh, I love it. It's so quirky. Yes, I love it. And she had a lot of products to choose from. So, yes, go check her out. It's, it's just hilarious. And in my um, package was also this thank you bobbin. Hi, kind of. So I don't know. I think because there is just a small strip of washi tape on here, so maybe a planner planner people just keep their washi tapes on this. I don't know. I don't know, but I can always use it for scrap yarn, right? Yes, so thank you. <laughs> I will show you the other stuff I bought later because I got some fun stuff when I went on holiday last weekend. Um, yes, so these are my Alice in Wonderland socks and I love working on them. I probably would not have bought the sock blank if I saw it in a store. So I was super glad that I got this in a mystery package because it has been so much fun. And I will consider buying sock blanks again. Uh, but they are just not that many sock blanks, or at least not that many indie dyers that provide sock blanks here in the Netherlands. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see about that. The next thing I want to show you is a very fun project I have started a few weeks ago. Uh, actually, right after I recorded my last episode, um, I had a uh, punch workshop uh, at Wall of Fame, which is a um, yarn store in Maasbracht in the, in the Netherlands, very close to where I live. Um, and so it's, it wasn't a boxing workshop, it's not a punch <laughs> workshop like that, but you use a punch needle which looks like this. And this particular needle I've had for three years, if not more, and I've never, I've never figured out how to use it. I got it in a goodie bag. I thought, what the hell is this? It didn't make any sense to me because the back, uh, there are instructions on the back. And so it kind of shows embroidery things um and you there's a uh, thread coming out of the tip of the needle and they punch it in and then they come out and they have more thread on the needle and i thought how is that possible but yeah so when i saw that there was a workshop on punch needle or needle punching uh, i thought yes I, I need to do this and I need to figure out how to work with this needle. So me and my mom went to the workshop together um, and the workshop was taught by Marianne, who some of you might know or who I think lots of you will know through Instagram. She is uh, Marche Rose on Instagram and uh, she, she has a uh, crochet blog and lately has been doing a lot of needle punching and she does amazing work and a lot of colorful work. So always when I look at her feet or when I see a picture of her, I just, ah, oh, I feel so happy because of all of the colors. And I've met her a couple of times at craft fairs and yarn stores, and she is just the most wonderful per person ever. Uh, so I was very excited to attend a workshop of hers. And um, yeah, let me let me show you her handout. So the workshop is called Punch Like a Pro. There by Marianne Deckers Rose. And these are some of her uh, examples. 
that she has made. See, it's all so colorful and pretty. And I'm trying to see if I can show you any more without showing too much. Yeah, so she has um, she has templates in here that you can draw onto your fabric to recreate the sample. And um, yeah, it was just a really, really fun workshop. Um, the only thing is that Mariana has made this needle punching so popular that actually the needles were all sold out. So, um, and the only needles that the shop owners were uh, able to get were actually way too uh, tiny for the yarn that we thought we were gonna use. So we had to work with uh, embroidery thread and like split it um, so we would have yarn that was thin enough to use. Um, so the ladies at the uh, at the yarn store were super kind, and also Mariana is super kind to offer us uh, a new date to do the workshop once more when the needles would actually be in stock again. So that was super amazing um, because uh, you know uh, they felt so bad that they didn't have the right equipment. So and everybody was kind of struggling a bit, but. Um, yeah, but they did have they did have uh, some of these needles in stock, which have a bigger hole, so you can use thicker yarn. Uh, and I also brought my needle just in case, and I was able to um, to start working with uh, just regular cotton yarn um, because let me just get it out of the packaging. So. Um, the yarn goes in here. You have a little tool that you insert that grabs the yarn on this side and you pull it through. So it goes in here and then it comes out here. And there is a hole in the middle of the needle. There is a hole in the middle of the needle so the yarn is threaded through that hole. Um, and you punch it through the fabric and the idea is that it creates kind of a loop on the back side and then you pull it out well carefully so that you don't pull the entire loop back out and then you um, punch it back in and the idea is that you create um, an image with the punch needle and the yarn. Uh, so what I made is a little, um, little something inspired by a picture I saw on Instagram. Uh, it's a teacup on a tablecloth with some detailing in the background, and um, actually, I uh, when I was knitting the Alice in Wonderland socks, I thought this might subconsciously also be inspired by Alice in Wonderland because you know isn't there this tea party and this bottle that says drink me so yeah I I feel that this is also kind of Alice in Wonderland themed so this traditionally is considered the back side because this is the flat side of the punch needle work while the back, and I've already closed it up a little bit, the back is where the loops show up. So you actually punch through the fabric, leave the loop on this side, and then, um, so you always work from this side and then you can kind of see for yourself if you will use this side as the front or the loop side as the front because traditionally this side is used as the front because um, they use it for like tapestry, pillows, carpets, um, yeah. So actually for my next punch needle project I am thinking of using the loopy side as the front. Yeah, but it's just 
it's just so much fun and um, I can't work to um, make another uh, Parish Needle project. So yeah, I'm really happy with this hoop and how it turned out and I'm gonna hang it on my studio wall right there. Yeah, yeah, it was just a lot of fun and um, yeah. I recommend any anyone doing uh, punch needle uh, if they get their hands on a big enough needle. <laughs> All right, what I do have to say is that um, I recommend getting a uh, a larger hoop to actually work on because um, so I'm f I framed it in this wooden hoop and uh, originally this was also the hoop that I um, worked the punch needle um, project in but then you don't really get to work on the outside so um, to work on it I actually got some bigger hoops and um, I also found that the hoop didn't really grip the fabric well enough. It kept like, uh, when you punch through the fabric, it's with quite some force. So I would punch through the fabric and it would already get a little bit loosened. So that was really frustrating. But at the end, I figured maybe the fabric was just too thin because people uh, would suggest that I use plastic hooks instead, but um, it didn't really make a difference. Uh, so wooden or plastic didn't really make a difference for me. But at the end, I just inserted some scrap fabric in together with the fabric I was working on and that would kind of uh, keep it in place a little bit better So that's my little tip for you uh, These were actually uh, hoops I bought in Koblenz uh, this past weekend um, So I went to Koblenz with my family and uh, Of course, I also looked up some yarn stores in the area I looked up this store called Wolle Rödel and it seems to be this kind of chain store that they have in several uh, German cities. Um, and they had a lot of yarn for crochet, so a lot of cotton yarn, um, cotton tape yarn, t-shirt yarn, uh, but also some sock yarn and I got this really fun colored uh, sock yarn by Regia, which is also kind of self-patterning. Uh, you see it right there. So that was really fun. And then I also found some awesome buttons. Buttons are really expensive though. Like these were at seven euro. And so that's like almost one euro per button. I think it's really expensive. Anyway, and I also found these, super cute. Also one euro per button, so yeah. But a button can make or break your project, so I do value them a lot, so yes, I like buttons. Uh, so I got those and, and this yarn, yeah, that was actually all I got and the embroidery hoops, so. I, be I behaved pretty well last weekend. I have two more things to show you. <laughs> and they are both different crafts than one, what I have shown you so far. So, um, when I was working on my punch needle project uh, and the hoop kept slipping, uh, or the, the fabric kept slipping inside the hoop, and I, I remembered that I had this uh, bigger a plastic hoop somewhere um, and I couldn't find it and I asked my mom do it is it still at at your house and um, and she found it and I asked her to to bring it to um, uh, on holiday so this was the hoop and um, she also brought the project I was 
working on with this hoop. And that project has been ongoing for several years. Um, it's an embroidery project, cross stitch to be exact. And um, I had started it in China when I was studying abroad there um, in 2011. So a, lot, a long time ago. And this is the project that I had started. So here you can see it's a Chinese boy and a girl and this actually is um, uh, after I bought it I found out that it was some kind of wedding symbol you know a boy and a girl holding a uh, ribbon together so yeah it's probably something that mothers would um, cross stitch for their daughter's wedding and that it would be framed at their house or whatever. Um, but I just liked the image. These are the embroidery threads that I got with it. And actually on the, um, here I, um, I've noted down when I worked on this. So I first started working on this uh, December 16th, 2011. And the last time I worked on this, no, that's not true. Okay, maybe I haven't noted down every time I worked on this because it says the so last time I worked on this is June 2nd, 2012. Well, I think I have worked on this couple of years ago anyway anyway so uh, I had done quite a bit uh, so far I had done well um, practically everything you see here but what I've done last weekend is I added the um, some details of it so yeah it's a very slow progress um, yeah, but it's very meditative. Um, yeah, it's just really fun. And this is drawn with a special pen and you can just wash it out afterwards. Yeah, so when, uh, when my mom took this project to the holiday home and I had finished my punch needle project, I thought, well, why not work on this a little bit more. So that was fun. I even worked on it in the car on the way home. I did get a little bit car sick. <laughs> Embroidery in the car is not the best idea. So who knows, I might be working some more on that from now on. Right, last thing. I did some more natural dyeing and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, so last time I did some dyeing with alder cones, avocado seeds and skins, uh, lichen and onion skins. And this time uh, I did some more dyeing with avocado seeds and with carrot top. Yes. And those of you who uh, watch my Instagram stories uh, have already seen this. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share it on the podcast as well because I found these results mind-blowing. <laughs> so, okay. First, I did some dyeing with a carrot top. So the green bushy leaves on top of carrots. And... Um, this is what I got. Uh, this is cotton fabric mordanted with alum. And this is merino yarn, uh, also mordanted with alum. So you see that on the cotton, it gives a very, very pale yellow. While on the um, yarn, it's kind of a uh, gr greenish yellow, kind of like a chartreuse. Um, yes, so I already liked this result very, very much. But then 
I kind of uh, I did some uh, research because last time I had tried to make the dye bath um, I had tried to change the pH so I had tried to make it more acidic by adding vinegar didn't work okay whatever um, and this time I had tried to make it more alkali so that's the opposite of acidic and to do that I added some bicarbonate of soda which as a coincidence was available at the company where I work uh, the company where I work import Asian foods and this is um, oftentimes used in uh, baking cooking yeah but it can be used for a lot of things it can be used to soften the skin like they make a kind of paste with water and like rub it on your elbow you can add a spoon of this to uh, a, to a flower vase and then it keeps the flowers fresh for longer it just this is amazing but also what it does is it changes the pH um, of anything you add it to so first I dyed this I let it um, you know uh, simmer for half an hour to an hour then I took this out I still had one other fabric scrap and um, wool scrap in the dye pod. I added a spoonful of this. It started fizzing. <laughs> and then I get this color. So let me show you the difference. <gasps> Look at this. It's just so much more vibrant. It's amazing. On on the yarn, it it's much less of a difference, but on the fabric, oh my goodness, it's really amazing. And I'm actually not sure if um, if I when I wash this with you know regular tap water, which has the same pH as this, I don't know if it will change back to this color, but you know. Uh, I'll just have to try out and see. Uh, so that was amazing. And then I did the same concept with avocado seeds. So, um, yes, here it is. So um, I did the same concept with avocado seeds. This was the color I got out of the first dye bath. Um, I put in three avocado seeds. And this is the color I got, a beautiful pink. Uh, it's uh, more dark on the, on the yarn, um, as dye tends to attach better to animal fiber than to plant fiber. Uh, but still, lovely, lovely color. When I added the bicarbonate of soda, I get this color, which is amazing. I think it's so interesting. So, yeah, it just darkens the color a lot. And here you you really uh, also see the difference on the yarn. And it did, uh, I don't know if I created more friction with the yarn, but it also, uh, it doesn't feel as soft anymore. So. Uh, I'll have to do more experiments with that to see if it affects the softness of the yarn. Um, yes, but I'm totally amazed. And of course, when when I prepare a dye bath, I uh, so I put in the avocado seeds in water, and I simmer it for a half an hour to an hour. I take out the avocado seeds, put it somewhere. And then I put in the uh, stuff I want to dye. And uh, actually, uh, the avocado seeds can even produce enough color for a second dye bath. So I repeated the process. I put the seeds into water again, fresh water, and I cooked them again. And from that dye bath, 
I got a very light pink, but still I got a lovely shade. So yeah, you can see the difference in color. This is from the first dye bath, this is from the second. So still, and I didn't put any yarn. Oh, no, oh, I thought I did, but no, I didn't put any yarn in this one. But since yarn, uh, I mean, since um, uh, animal fiber takes the dye better, uh, I think even with this dye bath, I would have had a very nice color on the um, yarn. Same with this, and the fabric is kind of, you know, very pale, um, still pretty, but, you know, look at that yarn. It's amazing. So, yeah, I'm, I was, again, totally blown away by the results, and um, I can't wait to do more. Uh, I have ordered some, uh, some undyed yarn, and I can't wait to actually do these experiments with a full 100 gram skeins so yes i'm excited for that um yes Whew. and this is a very long episode <laughs> i was expecting that because i've had an extra week um in between episodes to create more content Whew. yeah um and i actually have even more to show you but i will Keep that until next uh, until next time it's only a swatch so I will just um, keep that until next time um, right so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will not be offended in the slightest if you did not um, watch it in one in one take so usually when I watch podcasts I watch a little bit at breakfast and then my boyfriend comes down for breakfast and I stop watching to kind of you know be more social <laughs> and uh, and then um, later in the day I watch um, I continue watching the same podcast so uh, I do that all the time I will not be offended if anyone does that with, with my podcast by all means you know uh, yeah so thank you so much for watching thank you for all of your kind comments and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time bye, -bye.